cancer, cancer is a nasty disease. Why? Because it's cells of our own body that are turned crazy. Due to a number of different factors, smoke, stress, an on switch will be turned in one of our cells. This on switch will give an order to the cell to start dividing in a crazy way. And the cell will start accumulated offsprings in our body and form a mass, a tumor mass. The speed of accumulation of these cells will determine the aggressiveness of the cancer. And if not container stopped, this will make us extremely sick and eventually kill us. So the strategies to try to block cancer were different. We can defend ourselves against, for example, flu infection. We can defend ourselves against bacterial infection. We can even heal ourselves, heal a wound, repair a bone. But we cannot defend ourselves from these crazy cancer cells. So the initial strategy that was developed was to use chemicals, chemicals that will stop totally cell divisions. As normal cells divide, but also cancer cells divide more quickly than normal cells, then chemicals, chemotherapies, or kill chemos, will affect more cancer and contain cancer and kill cancer more quickly than normal dividing cells. However, everything that divides in the body will be affected by chemotherapies. Hair, nails, digestive tracts, blood, even a developing embryo will be affected by chemotherapies. You can compare chemotherapies such as a B-52 trying to attack the enemy in a carpet bombing and, of course, provoking massive collateral damages. If this type of strategy worked during World War II, results were less impressive during the Vietnam War. So people are trying to find a new way to get the can like cancer cells. For example, targeted therapies, using like very sophisticated drones with smart missiles that will go inside the body, find exactly where the cancer cell is hiding, and kill the cancer cell there, using the immune system. I guess that everyone in this room has an immune system. So what our immune system does the best? Protect us from foreign intrusions. Bacteria, flu, a lot of different things. An immune system can be compared, for example, to the immigration police. It goes in the body and checks ID. If the IG checks OK, everything's fine. But if the IG doesn't check OK, it will eventually stop it and kill whatever is not from our body. So it will reject it, even cells from someone else. However, the immune system cannot recognize a cancer cell. Why that? Because, of course, the cancer cells have a valid ID and will let go by the, by, the, by the immune system. So researchers in the 70s tried to use the immune system, for example, antibodies that come from the immune system, and start to engineer them in a way to modify their tip and program these antibodies to recognize very specifically targeted cancer cells and can be compared to a smart missile. But they're empty smart missiles. They don't have a warhead payload to kill cell, like the cell. For example, if the antibody binds to a cancer cell, it won't explode. So the cell will stay there. You need over 100,000 of these antibodies targeting the cancer cell to make it die. For example, rituximab that was developed in the 70s saved thousands of lives from very aggressive B-cell leukemia. But you don't have that many monoclonal antib antibodies like this going and targeting cells. So people start thinking, trying to find other type of strategies and see if there is not strategies to go put payloads on them. These type of payloads are chemotherapy. So you put chemotherapy on a monoclonal antibody. It's called antibody drug conjugate, ADC. Put them inside the, the blood of the patient. It goes and concentrate chemo on the cancer cell and try to avoid healthy tissues. Here, you can get down to maybe 10,000 of these like darts that would go directly on the cancer cell. But the real dream of researchers 
was to use something that is in all of, our, of us, T cells, a real cell killing machine. T cell circulate in the blood is part of this immigration police trying to hunt for anything inside the body that would be a foreign intrusion. It has a sniffer called the T cell receptor. Each time it detects something that don't belong to us, it will immediately target it and kill it. For example, the flu. Here you have like the small round thing below is the T cell and will release weapon and make totally the cell that is infected by flu to explode, releasing weapons. It needs approximately 15 minutes to recharge and can go and kill another cell and can go do this more than 10,000 times in a row. But the most impressive thing is that this T cell will expand at the first kill by more than 100,000 fold in billions of T cells in the body. And also it goes and can get outside from the blood vessels and hunt for the target even under the skin and clean up totally the body. The fact is that after two weeks of hard work, the T cell will exhaust totally their, uh, their weapons, and of course they expand, they will exhaust their weapons, and only 5% of them will survive and will keep memory of these battles, so this would never happen again. The problem is that the T cell crosses, for example, a cancer cell, and check with it. Part of the family, the T cell don't want to kill the cancer cell. So researchers try to find a strategy to make this T cell, this like immense killing machine, to go and try to target ca cancer cells. So the first idea was to make antibodies that plug on one side of the can on the T cell and go and make the T cell focus its attention on cancer cell. It's called bispecific antibodies. Bang, it will kill it. But the thing that you would lose in this operation is essentially the expansion of the T cell, it's a normal matchmaker. So you make the T cell kill the cancer cell, and this is it, and won't no expansion. But the real powerful thing that was built by researchers was to start to engineer genetically these T cells into a new type of product. So what was done was fairly simple. Take a T cell, take a gene, put the gene inside, gene will go inside the program of this T cell and will start expressing a molecule called the chimeric antigen receptor or CAR, it's a new arm, that will give three different type of properties to the T cell. First, recognize cancer cell. Second, kill this cancer cell. And third, expand into billions of clones inside the body. So the first attempt to try to cure people with this therapy was like patient back several years ago that had failed all other kind of like cancer therapy and could not be cured with super aggressive cancers, had pounds of tumors growing in their body. So what they did is that they extracted the T cell from the patient, added a car inside, re-injected this inside the patient, and waited for the first first week, nothing happened. I never thought, once thought that the therapy has failed. And then suddenly, the patient went into a super high fever, a flu-type fever, and families start to worry, the doctors thought that the patient would die. After two weeks, fever stopped, and the patient was checked, totally cancer-free. Two pounds of tumor, this is one pound, boom were melted down in two weeks, and the cancer, like the cancer has totally disappeared from the patient. These patients are still alive today, like five years later. And since then, hundreds, if not thousands of patients, even products like this have been approved, or recently approved. What happened in the patient is that the T cell came in, focused its attention on the cancer cell, killed cancer cells, and start expanding, and this fever, like a flu, was a massive expansion of these T cells inside the body, that led to this big war, a destruction of total the tumor, and made this patient having this very high fever. Two years and a half ago, like mid-2015, doctors from London Hospital came up to us and asked us, because they had a patient that failed all other therapies, and they tried to make a cancer, like a, a, a CAR-T therapy like this, draw some blood, not enough T cells. With all the camera, the camera therapies, they killed all the T cells, and they couldn't do a CAR T therapy. 
So we thought about probably donating T cells. But you cannot donate T cells from one donor A to receiver B. Why that? Because it's an immigration police. So T cell that would come from a healthy donor that would get inside a cancer patient will come and start checking IDs. All the che IDs will be false and start destroying everything with its sniffer and will provoke massive destruction of internal organs in something called the graft versus host disease. It will induce a destruction inside. So that's not possible. So just to give you an idea, see if you'll take, for example, the US police, immigration police, and transport it and put it inside, for example, Lebanon. I take an example, Lebanon, and let them check IDs. <laughs> everyone can guess that it will stop all the population and killing everyone. It will make a massive destruction inside there. This is what is graphosis host disease. So the paradigm in medicine was you cannot donate T cell from donor A to donor B. But in 2015, we could do something that was really amazing, gene editing. Gene editing is the key. We could edit the genome of T cell. So what we did, we just engineered scissors. I mean real scissors, like these scissors, a pair of scissors. Oh, OK, not that big. But real molecular scissors, two nanometer size, that were programmed exactly to go inside a cell. And that's DNA, probably not two meters and a half. I haven't measured this. But they're programmed to find exactly the gene. This is the gene for, like, that makes the sniffer. And we'll make a snap inside. This is an operation of gene editing in front of your eyes. Click. So clip it like this. And you have the two tips of the gene. The cell will say, alarm. We have to repair DNA here. And we'll stitch back this, provoking a mutation inside the gene. And the gene will be disabled. It won't work anymore. So the thing that would happen then is that the T cell will lose its ability to recognize non-self, will be totally blind to non-self. And then after this, you just are add the gene coding for the car, and you have a super gene-edited car T cell that can focus 100% of its attention against the tumor cells without going and harming the patient. So what we did, we injected the T cells to the patient. Two weeks later, the patient felt better, one month later, the patient was diagnosed cancer-free. And since then, two years and a half after, these patients that have been treated this way, tens of them, are still in complete remission. And that's totally opening the new gate of a new type of therapy, where you can take, for example, normal donor healthy cells, you extract the T cells, you cut the DNA inside, reprogram this, put a car inside, and then you make a universal cell that they give it given to anyone, no need for the patient to provide the T cells. This type of therapy marks a new era. It's a new era in cancer therapies as the T like the cells are becoming real cancer killer products. It's probably the end of a prehistoric period in here. A cell is a very small, tiny machine. And just reprogramming inside the DNA, and the DNA has a huge complexity inside. It's 6.4 billion letters that are assembled. So I just like showed you how you can just cut down two genes and add, for example, one gene. Seems to be really simple, but it's already a huge sophistication. However, it marks probably the beginning of what is going to be the most powerful revolution in the history of medicine. T cell, as these little cancer killer drones, are going to be programmed in a more and more sophisticated way to become the most powerful medical tool human ever created. Thank you very much.